welcome back in today's lecture i am going to talk about the existence and uniqueness i hope that you are already familiar with some property of existence and uniqueness because in in previous lectures we have discussed about that what is role of existence and uniqueness whenever we are dealing with some kind of physical model or mathematical model so basically existence and uniqueness is one of the essential property whenever some mathematical model represent a some kind of possible physical system so i have i have some kind of mathematical model that is represented like this and this is uh, the, this is this mathematical equation is also we are uh, we have given some kind of a specific name that is non autonomous system and after that i have uh, i have started this uh, to the looking solution at t equal to 0 and what we found that at x t 0 i have some kind of initial condition x 0 and function will satisfy this kind of mapping and what we expect that if i start this experiment or if i start solving this equation so from t 0 i have x 0 and after sufficiently a sufficiently a small time after t0 i can able to predict xt uniquely and it means that solution exist and that also become unique so try to understand the physical situation suppose i have to do some kind of experiment suppose for example you can just consider the pendulum system so what we expect that initially if pendulum system on equilibrium point and if i will apply some kind of force then what happens immediate immediately what we expect that that will move and once they start moving then just after t equal to t0 state start evolving okay and that state what we expect that that should be unique and if i repeat that experiment then what kind of goal i have i will get same set of motion that is our main goal it means that if i have some kind of deterministic system then we can expect that if experimental situation remains the same then i can able to repeat the experiment that is the case okay so in order to repeat the ex uh, experiment i have to make sure that for t equal to 0 onward there exist a solution and after that whatever solution that is going to exist that should be unique otherwise i cannot able to repeat the experiment so in today's lecture what is our goal that we want to see that under what condition this particular non linear differential equation has unique solution so i cannot tell that always that solution will exist because i have already given one counter example that if right hand side is not properly defined then it might possible i have i have no solution okay it might possible that f tx is properly defined we have solution but we have multiple solution from one point okay so if i do not restrict this f t x t or right hand side of non linear differential equation that i can not comment about the existence and uniqueness and due to that reason in today's lecture just i am going to talk about the sufficient condition for existence and uniqueness of the solution of this non linear differential equation it means that if i have deterministic model then i am going to tell that under what condition i have some solution and solution is also unique it means that if you are going to develop same kind of mathematical model in any part of world then you are going to see the same kind of pattern that is the main idea okay sufficient condition meaning of sufficient condition is that whatever condition i am going to talk in today's lecture so if that condition is satisfied then i can give guarantee that this non linear differential equation is going to represent some kind of valid mathematical model or i have unique solution okay but suppose if that condition is not satisfied then i cannot comment anything that is the meaning of sufficient condition okay 
whenever I am talking about necessary condition, then I can give guarantee that if this condition is not satisfy, then then uh, whatever event that is not going to occur. But here, uh, what we are telling that if this condition, some condition is satisfy, then event is going to occur. But if that condition is violated, I cannot in, uh, comment anything. That is the uh, that is the main crux of the sufficient condition and this problem is also called initial value problem because i have given some kind of initial condition and after that we are going to look towards the possible evolution of the state so so let us try to see the situation since i have some kind of non linear differential equation and since i have non linear differential equation so so and non linear non linear differential equation i have represented like this ftx and you can see that if I am just try to do experiment between t equal to t0 to t1, then I am hoping that I have some kind of solution xt and that map to Rn because why I am assuming that this is n dimensional system. And what we expect that x dot means rate of change is defined at each and every point and that will satisfy this kind of condition. So suppose if f t x x so here function f has two argument one argument is time another is a state so if both are continuous so I, I can tell that x is continuously differentiable means solution whatever solution I am getting that is also continuously differentiable because you can see that if this is continuous then x represent the state and x dot is the rate of change of state so I am telling that is continuously differentiable but what happens that most of time continuous depend uh, the means uh, uh, function right hand side of differential equation x dot equal to f t x we do not expect that that is continuous continuous with respect to first argument as well as second argument we are relaxing the condition and what is our assumption that right hand side of this differential equation is continuous in x but only piece wise continuous in t and why this kind of condition is required I have written here the assumption that f t x is piece by continuous in t so obviously that is continuous in x with respect to x so continuous with respect to x uh, x means I am assuming that for for all t or or I am not worrying about the t I am just worrying about the x so I am seeing the variation of f t x with respect to x and after that in terms of epsilon and delta we are going to to check that this is continuous in in some interval or some set or at at some point so basically whenever we are talking about the solution and suppose that i have some kind of region most of time if you see the nonlinear system so situation is like this x belongs to d and d is subset of r and this kind of situation i have so at least we are assuming that in this particular domain this function f t x is basically continuous okay with respect to x but we are just expecting that this function is piece wise continuous and in previous class I have already defined what is meaning of piece wise continuous so so please again check that definition so what I am telling that if this right hand side is piece wise continuous in t so why we are expecting this because Suppose I have some system like x dot equal to fx plus gx into u. Suppose I have this kind of system. This is also nonlinear system, but this is force system. Sometime it might possible that I want to apply some kind of input u that is time varying, and in time varying, I am going to give some kind of a step response. So if you see the step response, that is not always con continuous. That is piecewise continuous. So, so whenever a step is going to change at that time, it might possible I have loss of continuity. So I have finite loss of continuity at, at several point with respect to time. So due to that reason, we are we, uh, in order to allow generalized class of input, we are assuming that whatever this system that is in, in this uh, domain time or we, in this argument time, this is just piecewise continuous. So, so a story is that in this whole whole lecture what i am going to assume that i have some kind of nonlinear differential equation and right hand side of nonlinear differential equation 
f is continuous with respect to time and piece wise continuous with respect to time it means that finite number of point it might possible continuity condition is not satisfy with respect to time anyone has confusion on this and why we are expecting this because most of time whenever we are we are applying some kind of control to the system at that time some time or some possible case we are going to apply the time varying input and time varying input a step change is always occur so so i have some finite number of discontinuity inside the system so in order to avoid that or in order to incorporate that i have used this notion of piece wise continuity with respect to time so so anyone has confusion till now so this is the just a problem formulation and why existence and uniqueness is required let us try to see one example and after that i will come to the uh, contraction mapping theorem here i have some kind of non linear differential equation why non linear because xt power 1 by 3 is here and this is autonomous equation so i have already told you that if you are going to develop some kind of theory for non autonomous system most of time that is also valid for autonomous system and main idea is is looks like this why uh, what people are telling that suppose if i you have system like ftx so here you can see that x dot equal to ftx so you can treat time as a new state and you can define new state t dot equal to 1 okay so if you represent system like this then what happens that this system is again looks like autonomous and due to that reason if you are going to develop theory for this system then that is also valid for the autonomous system anyone has confusion whatever argu argument i have given here then please let me know why why whenever we are developing some theory for non autonomous system then that is valid for autonomous system why because i am one can uh, treat this time as a new state variable and time since we are taking differentiation with respect to time so differentiation of time with respect to time is one so i i am going to incorporate some extra state and whenever t is a state then this is all again become some kind of autonomous system anyone has confusion and due to that reason there is no need to discuss extra theory for the autonomous system now suppose i have this kind of system and here you can see that time is not explicitly present implicitly that is obviously present and it is possible to show that this x t power 1 by 3 is continuous okay and i am assuming that x equal to 0 this is 0 so even if this is continuous but it is possible to show that there exist two solution from same point x equal to 0 if you solve or i have already told you that how to check that this is solution just you can take the differentiation on both hand side right hand side and left hand side it is possible to show that same differential equation one can going to generate and xt is the trivial solution so i have two solution from t equal to t if you substitute t equal to 0 so from t equal to 0 i i can either write solution like this or either write solution like this so i have just t if that is just greater than t0 or t greater than 0 then i have two solution two different solution so even if that is continuous then also i can not tell that i have the unique solution from some point and due to that reason some more restriction is required so due to that reason what i have written that continuity of ftx is not sufficient to ensure uniqueness of the solution it is possible to show that if we have continuity then at least i can able to talk about the existence of the solution of this equation why i am telling this because if you are going to solve this then solution one can represent like x0 and plus t0 to t f tau x and d tau so if this is continuous then it is possible to show that there exists some kind of definite integral for this and due to that reason i can give guarantee that there exists a solution so continuity only talks or only give guarantee that i have some kind of solution okay but it might possible i have more than one solution also so how to make sure that i have just unique solution for that i have to give some kind of extra condition and that kind of extra condition is called lifchit con uh, lifchit condition okay so in today's lecture i am going to just tell you the small story about lifchit condition and and uh, how to calculate lifchit 
constant or these kind of things i will i am going to discuss in the next um, uh, next part of uh, uh, this um, course it means that next lecture i will discuss so let us uh, start the contraction mapping theorem because in order to give guarantee that i have unique solution these kind of result mathematical result are required so now at least you are well aware about lot of terminology like banach space closed and after that mapping these kind of things you are become at uh, at least comfortable at this moment due to that reason i i hope that you are easily able to understand this theorem so let us try to see the statement of theorem what this theorem contraction mapping theorem this is very very important theorem so and this is useful for several branches of applied mathematics as well as the regular mathematics so what they are telling that let s b a closed subset of banach space b so i have some kind of space b where i i have defined the scalar multiplication and vector addition i have defined the notion of norm i have defined the notion of convergence i have defined the notion of cauchy sequence so that is complete space after that what we are telling that s b the closed subset so so in inside b i have some kind of closed subset meaning of closed subset is is that if you will take some kind of sequence in this particular suppose that this is s and this whole space you can assume that is v that is banach space so what we are telling that if i have some kind of sequence xk and whenever i am representing sequence then we are adding this kind of symbol so we so if if some uh, some set is closed then this sequence is going to converge to some point some limit point so in it means that whenever i have this this kind of condition closeness condition then i can give guarantee that inside this banach space i have some kind of limit so what i am telling that let s be a closed subset of banach space b it means that inside this space i have some limit point i i am not telling that in whole space i have limit point but at least i can tell that in this space if this is closed then i have some kind of limit point anyone has confusion on this definition because uh, in previous class i have already uh, discussed what is meaning of closed subset but how to define closed subset how to define bounded or how to define closed and bounded so meaning of closed that if you have some kind of sequence then that sequence is going to converge to some accumulation point or limit point okay now what i am assuming that i have some kind of mapping t and that map from s to s it means that if i apply some kind of mapping to this particular space and that mapping is t then whatever space that is going to generate that is again in same banach space and that map to s so after applying this kind of t i am mapping from this s to s i am mapping from same space to same space similarly here you can also see that x dot equal to f t x whenever i am writing so and after that what we are assuming that suppose f x i have not t x f x so at that time what what happens that you can see that x belongs to x belongs to r n and after that after differentiating or after mapping also f x is the mapping that again belongs to same space because x map from r n to r n so similar kind of things we are assuming here that something is mapping from same space to same space and after that i i am going to assume something in order to apply this contraction mapping theorem what i am going to assume i am going to assume that suppose this mapping satisfy this kind of condition for all x and y inside s so now i am just going to concentrate on this interval and this interval i have already told you that this is closed interval means if some sequence is going to start inside this particular particular subset then i have limit that kind of things and i am assuming that row lie between 0 to 1 1 is not included 0 is included obviously but 1 is not included then it is possible to show that it means that if we are in banach space inside banach space if i have some kind of subset and if that subset is closed and then and if mapping will satisfy this kind of condition for any two for any two uh, two element inside that subset then it is possible to show that particularly in that subset of banach space there exist a unique vector 
x star and that is going to satisfy this kind of x star equal to t x star means that is going to satisfy the fixed point this is the meaning of the fixed point and x star can be obtained by method of successive approximation i have told you that what is meaning of successive uh, approximation in the previous class that i am going to generate since mapping like this so you can start with any point finally you are going to converge to the limit point because that is close uh, um, close subset so that is obvious okay we are going to show that starting from any arbitrary initial vector in s you are going to converge to x star this limit point so first point is telling that there exists a unique uh, unique uh, vector and that satisfies the property of fixed point and second statement of this theorem is telling that you can find able to find x star by any method of succession or successive approximation okay so you can start from any initial condition finally you are going to converge to that fixed point okay so so up to here any anyone has confusion so so try to understand the contraction idea of contraction mapping theorem suppose we are in banach space inside banach space if i have some kind of closed subset so if i am going to start from that particular closed subset then what happens that always i have some kind of fixed limit point provided this kind of condition will satisfy that that condition is very very important so basically this condition okay so if this condition is satisfied then i can able to give guarantee that there exists some kind of fixed point so any anyone has confusion on 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 the idea of contraction mapping anyone okay now let us try to understand the proof proof is very very simple again so i have already told you that whenever i have some kind of mapping then i can start from anywhere from any initial condition so suppose i have some kind of initial sequence x1 inside this subset s and this s is subset of the banach space and i have defined sequence like this and here t this 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 uh, this t is some kind of operator or fixed point operator that is mapped from s to s and here all sequence we are telling that suppose xk is some sequent inside uh, inside s and for all k that is going to live inside that because uh, because this sequence is closed because this subset is uh, sorry that subset s is basically closed sub subset so whenever some sequence is start there it is possible to show that is going to converge to some limit point inside that s due to that reason we are assume this kind of uh, uh, this kind of things so now what is our aim i have to show that whatever sequence i have consider in that particular space that is cauchy sequence okay and why why cauchy sequence is required try to understand the idea of proof idea of proof is that if we are able to show that sequence is cauchy and we are in banach space so so what is idea even if i don't know the limit but i can give guarantee that there exists a limit because in banach space every cauchy sequence is also convergent sequence so i am going to consider any two arbitrary sequence and after that i am going to to show that that is cauchy sequence that is the idea of proof so so i am going to uh, to start from the first two sequence that is nearby so suppose that this sequence xk is this sequence and xk plus 1 is the next sequence so we are going to see the distance between these two sequence and since i am in higher dimensional space so i have to use the notion of norm so xk plus 1 minus xk and you can see that xk plus 1 is txk because i have defined the mapping mapping i have defined like this so this is our mapping xk plus 1 equal to txk so this is our mapping so after that similarly xk is txk minus 1 and after that i have some kind of uh, we have already seen that uh, from this uh, this contraction mapping theorem i have one assumption that suppose tx and ty is less than equal to rho x minus y and where rho lie between 0 to 1 and this is true for all s so since we are already in in this particular subset of banach space and due to that reason i can able to write rho and this kind of things again you can see that if i am going to again map this like t x k minus 
and this become t x k minus 2 again i can apply the, uh, the that condition and again i have row come comes out and at that time i have this point and this uh, point here and due to that region i have this kind of thing and if you uh, we do same kind of procedure then it is possible to show that you can see that in first step i have a row to a second step i have two and and similarly here what happens that when this is x1 and x2 at that time i have k minus 1 please check it anyone has confusion on this step how basically this is going to come into picture rajesh do you have any confusion silpi yes no sir okay now what we have seen that if i am going to take any two closure sequence close close sequence means xk and x xk plus 1 now since we have to show cauchy sequence so i have to to take any generalized sequence suppose i will take this sequence and this sequence and then we have to show that these two sequences is also converging towards each other and due to that region now i have to to consider two generalized sequence and due to that region you can see that here i have considered xk plus r and xk it means that an r is any number you can take so i have any two sequence now in between there exist many sequence but i am going to consider the distance between these two sequence so xk plus r minus xk so what i have done now i am going to break this norm norm like this xk plus r minus xk r minus 1 and so so what i have done i am going to do this kind of thing somehow like this and due to that region i have this term this term this term like this and you can see that any two neighboring sequence i have we have already seen that that will satisfy this kind of condition this kind of condition okay so now what you can do here whenever i have k plus 1 you can see that k minus 1 comes into picture it means that you can just see this coefficient k k minus 1 row k minus 1 is coming and after that i have x2 minus x1 and due to that region from here also you are able to see that since i have kr and kr minus 1 so automatically i have row kr minus 2 one one th uh, one quantity less similarly i have in place of k plus r minus 2 i have kr minus 3 and and similarly i can able to write and finally this become x2 minus x1 and now here you can see that i have up to k minus 1 k plus r minus 2 k plus r minus 3 now uh, what i am going to do i am going to to add some more sequence up to infinity and after taking these things common row k minus r so r is just a variable here so i am going to now add see the any any two sequence which, which is which is at infinite distance and due to that region this condition comes into picture and after that what you have to do you have to just now add this gp series row i so row 1 row row a square row cube and it is possible to show that this kind of things comes into picture okay now you can see that as and whenever we are talking about Cauchy sequence, at that time I have to wait for k tending towards infinity. Means I have to I have to, to check that when k is very very large, then what is the condition? So if k is very very large at that time, you can see that row lie row lie between. We have already assumed that that lie between 0 to 1. So from here also you are able to understand why I have given this kind of restriction. Because I have to prove the Cauchy sequence. So in order to prove the Cauchy sequence, I have to make sure uh, that this term is very very small and how this be, uh, uh, this term become very very small if rho is going to lie between 0 to 1 and due to that region once k tending towards infinity then this term is tending towards 0 so multiplication of x2 minus x1 with 0 that is tending towards 0 and due to that region now what I am able to, to claim that if you start with any two sequence in, in that subset S of the Banach space V, then it is possible to show that both are converging towards each other and that is Cauchy sequence. And I have already assumed that V is a Banach space. So, and we have proved that whatever sequence I am going to consider in S, that is also a Cauchy sequence. So, there always exists a limit. And due to that reason, we are telling that XK is going to converge to some limit point X star as K tending towards infinity. Moreover, we have also assumed that S is closed and whenever S is closed, we are able to understand that meaning of closed, uh, closed subset is 
is that so in inside the banach space suppose this is banach space and this is closed subset so if any sequence that is going to generate here that is going to converge to to the limit point so due to that region x star all sequence is going to converge to some x star so that is making you know, one can make sure using the closeness condition so you can see that in banach space i need at least three conditions one condition that i have to prove that for contraction mapping that should be banach space why banach space is required because we are able to make sure that all cauchy sequence as a convergent uh, that is going to converge to somewhere and why closeness property is required because if any sequence is going to generate inside this sub subset of this banach space then that is going to converge to some fixed point or some kind of limit point due to that region closeness condition is required uh, so banach space is required closeness is required and after that row row should be 0 to 1 is required in order to prove the cauchy okay so due to that region in this theorem we have three different condition okay so 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 due to that region you can now ch check back to the statement you can see that s is closed uh, b is banach space row row is going to lie between 0 to 1 then I can able to state the first condition. There exists a unique vector x star satisfying this. Okay. Now we are able to prove at least up to this point that x star is going to exist inside S. Now apart from that, we have to prove something more, and we have to show that x star is T x star. So that I have to show. So what I am going to do? I am going to start from any arbitrary sequence, and after that. what i am going to see that i am going to see the distance between x star and tx tx star so you can see that again i have used the norm inequality x star and xk at least i know that since i am in s in this space s i am so so i i know that if i start from any sequence i am going to con, uh, converge to x star uh, by 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 the closeness of this space so 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 due to that region i have incorporate one extra argument xk and after that xk minus txk so you can see that this is obvious that x star xk after k greater than uh, k tending towards infinity this is going to converge to this so distance between this to become zero after that i have this kind of argument xk minus txk so so what i am going to do here i am going to represent this into txk minus 1 and after that what i am going to do i am going to apply that condition that t uh, x minus t y is rho into t x minus t y so same kind of condition i am going to apply and uh, what i am going to do i am going to apply this for n time so if or or you can think like this as k tending towards infinity so again any sequence any sequence is going to converge inside this space to x star due to that region this sequence is going to converge to x star as k tending towards infinity so this is already zero and this is zero for k k tending towards infinity so both become zero simultaneously and due to that region i can tell that distance between x star and t x star that is uh, that is equal to zero tending towards zero or exactly zero you can assume that doesn't matter for us because i am going to consider k that is very very large and due to that region i, I can tell that fixed point exists and fixed point is going to satisfy this kind of condition up to here anyone has confusion okay so so if you are able to understand the statement of the theorem then you are able to easily prove so try to stuck on each and every statement and and after that you can just use the fundamental idea of sequence then you are convergence of sequence then you are able to prove and norm inequality is just required now one more important thing i have to show that whatever this point x star that is unique because we are going to uh, to give guarantee that in in this space this b space if that kind of condition is satisfied it means that uh, mapping tx minus ty if that will satisfy this kind of condition rho x minus y then i have unique fixed point if that that condition is not satisfied it might possible i have several fixed point i do not know but i am going to give guarantee that if this condition is satisfied then i have some kind of unique mapping okay because we have already seen that in case of of non linear differential equation i have multiple equilibrium point 
but I have to give that uniqueness, uniqueness. So for uniqueness, I'm going to apply the idea of contraction mapping again. So what I'm going to, to assume that whenever, this is very, very general, whenever you have to prove something is unique, then you can take two things. And after that, you have to show that both are equal. That is the way whenever we are proving the uniqueness of something. So what I am assuming that I have two fixed point x, x star and y star uh, in, in same space as and and what I am going to do now, I am going to apply that kind of condition. I am going to see the distance between x star and y star. If both are the same point, then distance between these two are equal to zero. So after that, what I am going to do, since whenever if x star is the unit uh, means fixed point, then I can, uh, we have just shown that that is nothing but t x star. So, so due to that reason, I have replaced this by t x star. Similarly, since y, I am assuming that I have two fixed points, so y star is also t y star. And after that, I have used that kind of condition rho x star minus y star. And since rho is less than zero, and here I have symbol less than equal to zero, so if if this is less than zero, you can see that that become contradictory. If rho equal to one, then only equality condition is satisfied. When rho less than equal to zero, so I cannot tell that this quantity is less than equal to this quantity. So this quantity is less than equal to this quantity, and but I have selected rho less than equal to uh, less than uh, less than one. So due to that reason, only one condition, this this inequality will satisfy. Try to understand like like this. We are we are basically telling this x star minus y star because what happens that rho is less than uh, less than one. So whenever we are telling this, so this condition will satisfy provided these x star and y star is equal zero zero less than zero only. Uh, then I can tell that this statement is, is true. Otherwise, this statement is no longer true. And due to that reason, finally, I have x star equal to y star means that is unique. Up to here, anyone has confusion? So, idea of the contraction mapping theorem that I have some kind of a space where I have vector space like property. After that, I have some, some kind of norm. And so I have no linear space. I have notion of convergence. I have notion. Uh, I have notion of Cauchy sequence. And if contraction mapping condition, that condition is basically called contraction mapping rho means mapping t x star t y rho x star minus y star. That is basically crux of the matter and rho lie between zero to one. So so this is called contraction condition. So if that condition is satisfied, then I can tell that inside that subset there exists a unique fixed point and that fixed point is going to satisfy the mapping x star equal to t x star up to here anyone has confusion and luckily whenever i am dealing with the nonlinear differential equation already we are in banach space okay so all condition is satisfied so what kind of extra condition we have to add in order to to, to show the uniqueness baby uh, Dinah, could you please comment? Are you able to understand my question? Yes, yes. So what do you think? What kind of extra condition I have to impose such that I have unique fixed point? Silpi? Okay. Uh, the, uh, the, after Tasima? What? Please speak loudly. Yeah. Huh. Please go ahead. Sir, we have that we are in a closed subset. No, no, close. Okay, close. Uh, closeness is one point. After that, uh, apart from closeness, something more is required. Uh, sir, that this row should be less than. Yeah, row should be less than means that contraction mapping condition should satisfy. That is only, only two condition is enough to prove that there exists a fixed point. Okay, so now, since we are already in Banach space, okay, so if we are going to make sure that there exists a contraction mapping kind of condition, okay, then there always exists a unique fixed point. Okay, so let us try to impose this kind of condition to next theorem and due to that reason, this theorem is called local existence and uniqueness theorem. So 
now if you, you if you understand the idea of the previous theorem or proof of previous theorem then this theorem is actually a straight forward result from the idea of banach space with contraction mapping because inside contraction mapping theorem i i i have already assumed two things what two things i have assumed that whatever things i am assuming that is closed and after that second thing that contraction mapping condition that row is lie between 0 to 1 that i have already assumed so if that condition is satisfied then that that is always exist fixed point and that fixed point is also unique inside some some uh, subset of the banach space so local uh, local existence and uniqueness solution is actually based on two things banach space and contraction mapping theorem okay and this is just a sufficient condition okay even if this condition will not satisfy i have solution but if this condition is satisfied then i can give guarantee that there exists a solution that is the meaning of the local existence and uniqueness of the solution so you can see the statement i have differential equation x dot equal to ftx so you can see that i have just talking about the right hand side of the, this differential equation so let ftx be a piece by continuous in t we have already assumed why that is piece by continuous in t because i have already told you that that uh, it might possible if i have time varying input at that time i have to apply some kind of a step uh, a step change at certain point also so i have I have finite number of discontinuity in terms of t. Due to that reason, I have just assumed that that is piecewise continuous in t and satisfy the Lipschitz condition. Now, this condition, you can see that inside contraction mapping, I have some kind of row is here and I have some kind of mapping here. In, in, in place of that, they have just substituted this function and after that, now they are telling that, okay, if this condition is satisfied and L is uh, here, some kind of positive number there is no restriction of l like contraction mapping that uh, that row lie between 0 to 1 so here first i am assuming that there exists some constant l that is greater than 0 so basically what we are telling if you try to see this idea of this i will i will discuss in next class but there just i will give you the overview since i know that if i have system like this ax a ax plus b u t so i have already seen that there exists a closed form solution for this system or or generally you can take this system then things become more just for simplicity i have taken this system so we know that how to solve this equation we know the closed form solution of this any anyone has uh, anyone has so, uh, confusion that uh, why i am telling that there exists a closed form solution of this because, because we know that how to solve this we know that solution of this is phi t and something t0 and after that uh, x0. I will define phi. I don't know how to define phi for that, that moment. x0, this is the solution, closed form solution. So depending on this at, I can able to decide this phi. So I have closed form solution. So this is just telling that I have, suppose that I have some kind of nonlinear uh, just plot for one dimension. And you can see that what this condition is telling. So if I have one dimension x dot equal to ax into xt and if you plot this, then I have something like, like this. I do not know how much angle I have. That, that is depending on at. And I am assuming that that belongs to uh, r. And after that, this is telling that if I have some kind of function which is going to lie below this, even if that is nonlinear, okay then i can able to know the solution why i am able to know the solution because i know the solution of this so i can tell that okay even if i don't know the exact solution but that solution is upper bounded by solution of this like this and due to that reason this kind of concept come into picture but let us first try to see the proof based on contraction mapping as well as the banach space and after that we will discuss this in more detail in the next class so, so for time being, you can forget that whatever I, I have discussed uh, just now. So idea, now at least you are able to understand that why, uh, why we are uh, talking, talking like this. So what we are telling that for nonlinear dynamical system x dot equal to ftx, if this kind of condition is satisfied, and you can see that I have restricted myself in this particular ball. So I am, uh, what I am telling that, I am not uh, uh, telling that everywhere. I am looking towards the solution, but I am assuming that x belongs to Rn 
and here x minus x zero that is less than r, and I am just looking solution between this t zero to t one. Okay, so x y that is going to lie inside this ball. So I have some kind of ball in in the Banach space, and here this is center, and this is the radius of the ball, and I am just looking this function inside this ball. Okay, anyone has confusion? And that will satisfy this kind of condition. Then we are telling that there exists a delta such that a state equation. This is called uh, most of time uh, since this might represent some kind of mathematical equation also. Then people are just telling this as a state equation. Okay, has a unique solution over this interval t zero t zero plus delta. It means that in this interval I can give guarantee that there always exists a unique solution. That is the statement of. the local existence and uniqueness of the theorem okay up to here anyone has confusion okay so how to prove proof is again very very simple because if you uh, if you understood the previous one you can see that whenever i have some kind of non linear system what i can do i can express that in form of integral equation we have already seen this and for fixed point uh, in order to apply the fixed point what i have done i have just represented this as uh, this uh, there exist a mapping x to t for all t such that x equal to px star we have to show so existence of fix, uh, fixed point can be established uh, established using the contraction mapping and requirement i have already told you that banach space closed subset such that p map to s to s same means inside the banach space i have some set and that map uh, from same to same and after that i have to to so that there exist a contract contractive mapping or some kind of contraction mapping over s it means that that condition rho rho should be lie between 0 to 1 okay so that much things is required so what what is way to prove what i have done first we we have solved this equation and i have already so, uh, shown that solution of this equation is going to lie in some kind of function space so i have developed function space and i have uh, and after that uh, in function space what i have i am going to do i am going to do point wise addition and a scalar multiplication and after that i have defined this kind of norm and after that since i am just looking solution inside this space due to that reason i have considered that as a closed closed space and here i have used this symbol of less than equal to r so in this space what i am telling that if you start any sequence whenever that is going to start there exists a limit i am going to prove this by proving this again as a some kind of cauchy can of sequence i am going to prove so we start the choice of delta i i have selected delta like this such that this is the subset of this so since i have to give guarantee that in this particular interval i have the solution so again what happens that p map from this uh, whenever i am representing x Equal to p x into t. So basically, this p map from v to v means Banach space to Banach space. But I have to just concentrate on s to s because I am going to define that s as a some kind of some kind of a space which is closed. So so due to that region, now I have to show that if I start in s, then I am going to remain inside the s. And due to that region, what I am going to do? I am going to see the distance between. P x t minus x zero. So I have taken the initial condition x zero, and after mapping, we are going to see that where that is going to lie. Okay. So 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 uh, we know that solution of this x zero minus p x zero because I have defined this p x zero as a x zero plus t zero to t and f tau, and after that x tau into d tau. So what I am going to do? I am going to check the distance between this, and I have defined. this and after that i have added this extra term and whenever i am adding some kind of extra term since equality sign is maintained so i have to similarly uh, remove some term then i have to add add the same term okay and after that since i have already know that this function f t x is piece wise continuous in p and whenever something is continuous i have told you that is also bounded and and due to that region i can give guarantee that that is remains bounded in this interval t0 to t1 so there exists some kind of maxima of this function that i know that is h so that is the beauty of piecewise continuity of f in terms of 
t so i am not uh, talking in terms of x but i am telling that okay since i know the initial condition x0 so for all t this function i know the maximum value of this function because that function is piece wise continuous anyone has confusion whenever i have already told you that if something is piece wise continu continuous and a space is banach then i can tell that that is bounded anyone has confusion on this and last time i have also asked this question to taslima that uh, that uh, i have some kind of piece wise continuity in some normally banach space then it implies bounded ness or not so so due to that reason i have asked that question now you can see that i know that lipschitz condition is satisfied and for all x i have this kind of condition so this kind of condition is already given in in the statement of theorem you can again check the statement this condition this is called lipschitz condition and after that we know that i have this kind of ball so i have this kind of condition is also there so i am going to use this kind of these two condition in order to see the distance between px minus x0 so so what we are going to to show that this distance somehow we have to show that that is not going to increase okay so now what i am going to do so use of use of the piece wise continuity you can see that this term i know that is equal to h okay and here i am going to use the lipschitz condition because tau and tau is here xt and x0 is here so that is xt minus x0 and l is going to lipschitz constant it comes into picture anyone has confusion on this why i am going to write this by this anyone silpi this step become clear to you yes nidhi binay ji Yes, yes. Oh, okay, okay. So, so now you can see that L plus R into H because this I have already assumed that this is less, less than R. Due to that reason, I have substituted R here. And after that, you can see that L plus L R plus H that is some kind of constant. So I can take it out from the definite integral. And after that, I have to just solve this t zero to p and d tau. So, so that is. Uh, uh, written like this, and we know that t minus t zero that is less than delta. We have already assumed because I am just considering solution between t zero to t zero plus delta. So this interval, I am just going to show that solution always exists inside this interval, and that is also unique. So due to that reason, I have substituted delta here. Now you can see that if you select select delta in some specific way. now i am going what i am going to uh, to show that this particular i have just seen the distance between pxt and x0 after that what i am going to do since we are in non linear space or or banach space so so in non linear space these two are function so so how to define the norm i, I can define the norm using help of maxima so maximum i have i have to see the maxima of this whole distance between these two to for all time interval t0 to t plus delta okay so i have added the maxima um, maximum sign here and that one can represent it like this and it is possible to show so that if i select delta that is less than equal to r l l plus l plus h if delta is less than r plus l plus h that i am not going to leave this ball this ball okay so try to see what is basic idea somehow i have to show that if my initial con condition lie inside this ball so after mapping mapping is px pxt so after mapping i am going to remain inside this ball so how to show that this uh, we are going to remain inside this ball i have to check the norm in in this banach space okay and that should be less than equal to r so and since delta in my hand so i can select delta properly such that i can give guarantee that if i am going to start inside this ball then i am going to live inside that ball so so i have to construct one ball inside the uh, the, uh, the banach space and how to construct ball using the notion of norm i can construct after that i can select the delta and after selecting delta like this so at least there exists one delta and and based on the value of r i can increase the value of delta you can see here so if 
and in that way i can also increase the level of solution between or existence of solution between t0 to t plus delta so since delta is totally depending on r so if i enlarge the region of r so automatically delta is going to increase and but i am going to show that p map from to s to s it means that if my initial condition inside the close close space that remains inside that close space anyone has confusion then please let me know now what i am going to do that i am going to show that p is contractive mapping over s and how to show that what i am going to do i am going to take two point x and y and after that i am going to see the distance between uh, uh, after mapping so suppose that if i have taken taken two point inside so i have this kind of banake space this is uh, this is closed space and after inside this pole i am and i am going to to select two point x and y and what i am going to do i am going to show that since i have to prove fixed point so i am going to to show that the distance between these two are somehow converging towards the fixed point so so i am going to take the help of contraction mapping so so what i have done here i have uh, map x to px y to py and after that again i am going to apply the lipschitz condition and 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 what i have done i have added something and i have removed something so here you can see that in this particular uh, particular point this pxt i can represent like this similarly py i can represent uh, like this and here why uh, what i have done i have um, i have pxt and pyt one more thing i have x0 and and y0 that is going to uh, comes into picture so so what i am assuming that suppose that i have x0 and y0 some point is there so x0 minus y0 for time being you can assume that x0 and y0 so here what i have not uh, equality sign x0 some norm is there plus x0 and into y0 okay and after that what i am going to do again i am going to see the distance between these two point this point and this point and after that again i have used the lipschitz condition l here and finally if you apply then this kind of condition is there and again you can see that x minus y x t and y t that this particular quantity is is somehow i have to represent some kind of ball only so ball is x minus y into c because x tau is going to converge to x and y tau is going to converge to y because why why i am talking about convergence because i am in closed space and due to that reason i have this kind of condition and again you can see here that i have this kind of condition px minus py is l delta x minus y so again if you select delta that is less than equal to rho minus l then again i can tell that this particular uh, particular uh, px minus py that is less than equal to because uh, delta i am going to select rho by uh, rho by l so if i am going to select this delta by rho by l so i can able to make rho that is lie between 0 to 1 less than 1 okay then i can tell that there exist a some kind of contracting mapping between these two point anyone has confusion on this okay it means that in order to prove contraction i have to make sure that rho is less than 1 okay and after that and 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 delta should be rho by l and if these two condition is satisfied then i can able to make sure that there exist a some kind of contract uh, contraction mapping and after that now you can see that so so in order to apply contraction mapping theorem now you can see that i have to track on delta i have to track on rho i have to track on the another delta so so this since i am just going to concentrate on solution between t2 t0 plus delta due to that reason this comes into picture so i have to select minimum among these and this condition is also satisfied in order to make sure the contraction you can see here just in order to make sure the contraction i have to make sure that this condition is satisfied due to that reason this should be also satisfied and after that this condition is also satisfied in order to make sure that i am mapping from s to s one condition i have just uh, driven ha uh, this condition is also satisfied
okay and due to that reason whenever you are selecting the value of delta at that time you have to select the minimum one then only i can tell that all condition all condition means if i start in s i am going to remain in s i can also able to talk about contract contraction mapping and i am my solution is going to live inside this interval so delta should be minimum among all up to here anyone has confusion what you can do please again go through the proof and in between if you have confusion then please ask uh, ask that confusion to me so just within 5 minute i am going to uh, to conclude this proof after that now you can see that xt equal to x0 like this have unique solution in s because i have already established the banach space contraction mapping and i know that that space is closed so and that is mapping from s to s so solution is going to uh, to exist in s x only now next step what we have to show that solution is going to lie inside the s and for that what i am going to do i have to make sure that solution is not going to escape from this ball okay so how to prove that solution is not going to escape inside inside that i have to show that all solution is going to lie between t2 t0 plus delta okay so i have to construct i have to construct the ball inside s and after that i have to show that if solution is going to to start from s that is going to remain inside the s so what i am going to do in order to prove that suppose that xt leave the solution uh, b and at this time t0 plus mu so once they are going to leave the solution of, from this ball then they are going to intersect it means that distance between initial condition x0 and suppose this time they are going to leave this ball so this distance should be r and due to that reason i have written this because i am telling that okay after this time t0 plus mu solution is going to leave inside this ball okay i have to prove and after that contradiction i have to show that this kind of condition is not going to happen that is proved by contradiction so so uh, so so at least uh, in today's lecture you are able to understand that how to prove uniqueness how to prove proof by contradiction okay so two two methods of proof i am going to use so here you can see that i am going to uh, going to show that t is greater than equal to t0 plus mu why i have taken this because i have started t0 and after that i am going to concentrate on t0 plus mu so t t is evolving between these two due to that reason i have written this now i am going to see the futuristic solution xt minus x0 again again i i think that this step is very very obvious we have already done this step and after that again up to here i, I think that you don't have any confusion please check it and after that what i am going to do once that is going to intersect the solution at that time xt minus x0 that is less than equal to this but if i select mu there exist a mu that is greater than this and that is greater than uh, greater than delta it means that this condition will never happens and due to that reason i have proved that that is not going to leave this ball it means that so so set b within the time interval this which implies that solution v lie inside the s so con consequently uniqueness of solution s implies the uniqueness of v okay so basic idea idea of proof is like this so again please go through proof and proof is that first you have to establish the banach space after that inside the banach space there exists a subset where initial condition is there and suppose that is closed it is possible to show that if contraction occur there then there exists a fixed point so that is the main idea of the proof so again please go through uh, go through proof proof is always proof is little bit tricky okay so but, but what i am expecting that at least you can understand the basic idea of proof how basically one can establish this and another version of this is called global existence in uniqueness of solution so without proof i am going to state and the next lecture i will again give the detail idea so global existence and uniqueness is telling that if this condition is satisfied for all x and y at that moment i am telling Uh, this condition is satisfied inside the ball then inside that ball there exists a unique solution now what i am telling that if this condition is satisfied for all x in rn means that whole space if that is that will satisfy then i have global solution and that is also unique so so how to prove that 
it is possible to show that I can able to extend that t0 plus delta and again I, I will I will take different different of value of delta and slowly I am going to increase the delta. In that way it, uh, one can prove this. So due to that reason I have just skipped uh, skip the proof of that. That is obvious from this. Okay. So now let us conclude the today's lecture. So what I am telling that suppose that I have some kind of nonlinear differential equation. Okay. And I have to make sure that nonlinear differential equation has a solution. Okay, so at least I can talk about the the sufficient condition. And what is the sufficient condition? X dot equal to f t x, whatever right hand side of function that is locally Lipschitz in x for local solution and piecewise continuous in t. Okay, local Lipschitz Lipschitzness means inside the ball that there exist a l and in tomorrow using example i will show that there exist a l whenever some some solution will exist okay and that is just a sufficient condition that is not a necessary condition okay so if you are not able to find l i cannot tell that there do not exist a solution second thing is that apart from this whenever we are talking about global solution then that kind of lipschitz kind of condition is satisfied in all over the space Okay, so I have to make sure that that will satisfy in all over the space. Okay, so in this way, whenever I have some kind of a state equation or mathematical equation, and if I see the right hand side of differential equation, so if that is locally or globally Lipschitz in terms of x and piecewise continuous in x, then it is possible to show that there exists a unique solution. That is the basic idea of the today's lecture. So if you have any confusion, then please let me know. Anyone? So Binay, yes, are you able to understand the idea? Yes, so I am not telling, uh, have, you uh, have you understood the whole lecture, just I am, uh, I am I am telling that have you uh, have you understood the idea or not? The idea is there. Uh, one more. Mm -hmm. We have to go through the proof, but it is clear. So, so could you just uh, for revision, could you please tell me that why piecewise continuity is required? So basically, sir, uh, most of the application when we talk, uh, we have to give. Uh, uh, we get. Yeah, yeah. Time varying input whenever we are applying. Varying then at that time a step changes there. So that is one idea, that is physical. Uh, um, physical. But what is uh, what is role of piecewise continuity in proof? Okay, so uh, piecewise, uh, we, I think uh, the row value we take from the uh, less than one, I think. Just uh, 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 no, the, there exists a H. Okay, uh, maximum right. bond. So whenever uh, something is piecewise continu uh, continuous in T, so it is possible to show that some function, if you take any initial condition, so for all T that is bounded, there exists some kind of maximum value. Yes. Sir. Yes. Sir. Uh, so bonded, bond, bonded bonded kind of things I can impose due to that reason piecewise continuity is required. Yes. Sir. Okay, Silpi, have you uh, have you understood this idea? of piecewise continuity yes sir and whenever we are talking about lipschitzness it is possible to show that using lipschitzness only i can define rho less than 1 so because l and rho is somehow related okay iram are you able to understand the relation between uh, uh, that uh, uh, that Lipschitzness con uh, uh, Lipschitzness constant and 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 that rho contractive map, uh, mapping condition rho. Are you able to understand the relation between these two? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, because you, uh, because you can see that rho should be less than equal to or or, or delta should be less than equal to r, uh, r by or I can select delta that is less than equal to r by l r plus h okay so based on the selection of r i can able to 
make sure that what is my delta and delta equal to rho by l okay so uh, so if i select l sufficiently large then i can able to make sure that rho is less than 1 so just uh, you can now go through the proof actually there are five methods of the proof okay so so uh, today's lecture you have already seen that how um, how to prove so uh, something is direct method another is contradiction method by contradiction counter examples and similarly there are exist a five method so one very good book in this direction that a, a transition to advanced mathematics okay so if you have time then please go through that that is very very classical book okay a transition to advanced mathematics so so they are also discussing different proof method methodology and a lot of examples are also present there so uh, now if you don't have confusion then i am going to close the today's lecture okay and tomorrow lecture i am going to talk i will take some uh, some practical example now of no linear no linear system and after that i will i will tell you that how to check the lipschitz continuity okay so whenever you are developing some kind of control okay and at that time without solving the no linear differential equation you are able to understand now using this sufficient condition that whatever control you have applied that is proper to make sure some uh, there exist unique solution or not that is the beauty of the today's lecture uh, so uh, just one thing ah um, uh -huh, please uh, go ahead um, we have initially built up the structure like uh, contraction mapping yeah and then we have used the contraction mapping to prove the uniqueness and the local existence yeah but uh, uh, finally when we are drawing so we are using a lipschitz condition where yeah. l we have not bounded between 0 and 1 as in the case of contraction mapping no no actually uh, you try to see that contraction mapping in contraction mapping tx t is mapping okay here okay. whatever condition i am telling i am condition uh, we are imposing uh, about the function not on the mapping because at that time tx is mapping from some space x to itself yes so t is map but here i have some function ftx so finally using that function again i will generate map okay and that map should be satisfy the contraction principle yes sir okay so uh, so okay i i, I uh, quickly i will write then you are able to understand the thing so idea is very very simple uh, i will tell you the idea idea is like this in contraction mapping if you see closely then you have uh, you are able to understand that at that time we are talking like this ty less than equal to rho x minus y am i right yes sir so t is mapping and what is meaning of mapping i have to banach space and t is mapping from one banach space to another banach space now here you can see that this is not a mapping this is vector field f t x so so i have just please wait for one second so that is the problem of soft problem of the software not a problem of okay f t y you can see here this is x dot equal to f t x okay so this is right we are imposing condition on right hand side not on mapping and this is less than l into x minus y now from this how to generate this map t we are telling you can express this in integral equation x equal to x0 xt equal to x0 plus t0 to t and f t f tau x tau into d tau so you can see here that here this this whole thing is going to generate some kind of mapping tx you can represent like this okay so it is possible to show that using this l i can generate some kind of row because inside the map 
I am just imposing condition here. But apart from this, I have lot of term. T T zero is here. T is there. X zero is here. Okay. So due to yes, that reason, I am I am telling that okay, L greater than zero, or L greater than uh, any number zero positive number is enough. Okay. Because from that positive number, I can generate some kind of row which lie between zero to one. So role of role of both things are totally different here. In contraction mapping, I am talking about the map, and here I am going to talk about the vector field. Whenever we are talking about local existence and uniqueness of the solution, okay. And how basically both are related? They are related by these two expressions, okay. So if I have idea of the Banach space, I have idea of piecewise continuity, then I can generate some kind of row, okay, with help of those concept such that. And with the help of L, such that row lie between zero to one. Yes. So due to that reason, I am not telling L should be lie between zero to one because I have to generate row with help of L, and always I can do. Anyone has confusion? Yes. Okay. And due to that reason, there is no condition on row. Row just should be any positive number. Is enough. Okay, in 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 uh, tomorrow lecture I will tell you I will take some example practical example and we will show that how to generate L. Okay, so with this remark I am going to end the today's lecture.